week we're digging into Psalm 48. Um, I called this sermon, Secure in the City of God. And we'll see uh, the city of God is in focus here. Is Zion, the city on the hill, the holy mountain. Um, as always, I encourage you to take some time, read through the psalm for yourself, so that you can get to grips with um, what the psalm is all about. Try and spot some repeated themes and make some notes and highlights for yourself. Spend some time praying that you will... Um, delight in the truths of this psalm as God reveals more of himself to you through the psalm and pray for those who you're going to be teaching the psalm to that uh, the truths of the psalm wouldn't just be intellectual truths for their minds but that they would impact their hearts that they grow to love God more as a result of studying the psalm together with you and as always I'm going to just spend some time highlighting things that have stood out for me in the psalm One of the key things is that we see the Lord God is mentioned over and over again in the song. We'll see, although it is a song about the city of God, um, God is actually the one who's ultimately in focus here. Just seeing how the psalm starts and ends with a focus on God. So great is the Lord and most holy and most worthy of praise. And then verse 14, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our God even to the end. So um, the focus is on God himself, but um, it is a song of security within the city of God. So the city is mentioned over against the city of our God, the holy mountain or Zion are the words that are used mostly here. The temple is within the city, which is a very important point to note. Then some of the details given about the city we see mentions the citadels and the fortresses. towers, ramparts, citadels. We see that the God of the city causes those in the city to praise him and to rejoice. These two repetitions of um, the eternal nature of this city, so forever and forever and ever, even to the end, um, so verse uh, verse 8 and 14 kind of just gives us Uh, that the city is going to endure. Um, God will make her secure forever. Now that straight away should cause us to wonder, well, he's speaking about the city of God, holy mountain, Mount Zion, which in this day when it was written was focusing in on Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. But we know sitting this side of history that Jerusalem was destroyed. Um, The people were taken into exile in Babylon Um, After Jesus, the Romans uh, ransacked Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. There's now a a Muslim mosque, the Dome of the Rock, on the site where the temple was. So what do we make of these things forever, forever and ever? It's got to be more than just a focus on the city of Jerusalem. Just a couple of things here. We see here the joy of the whole earth here. And then your praises reaches to the ends of the earth. So again, there's a something bigger in view here than just the city of Jerusalem. Just trying to work out a little bit of a, a structure for this psalm. Um, I saw verse 1 to 3 kind of talking about God is in this city. Um, verse 4 down to verse 8. We see God rescues the city. And I think it's hard. You can't pin this exactly on um, an event in um, in history. The psalmist doesn't necessarily do that. But the the details of verse six to, uh, 4 to 8 fit really well with uh, the story that we read in um, Isaiah 36 and 37 of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, coming to um, attack Jerusalem. 
but he leaves. He God says in Isaiah that he will not shoot an arrow here. He will not attack because God himself will defend the city. And God goes and destroys 185,000 of the Assyrian army and they leave. And then when we look at the words that are, are used in this section, um, they can all be used of the Assyrians at that moment. They were astounded. They fled in terror. They were trembling. They were in pain. They were destroyed. They were shattered. All of that is true because this section I, I saw is God rescues his city. And then you could divide the, this into two sections um, at verse 12, but the whole lot is showing uh, the dependability of God with this focus on within your temple, O oh God. That was the focal point where they knew God is with us. Our God is with us. They could point to the temple and say, our God is a God of unfailing love. Um, he is a God of righteous judgments. He is our God. And he is dependable. Now, as we go through this, it should, um, in that day, this reading this psalm and them looking at Jerusalem and the temple there, it would have made them realize that there was a place on earth where, with all the insecurity and uncertainty, there was one place where security could be found. And that was in Jerusalem, up on the hill, surrounded by the wall, with the temple. God, he himself showed himself to be the fortress. Um, he is the one who made Jerusalem beautiful, beautiful in its loftiness. Um, the focus is n not as much on the city of God. Actually, it's on the God of this city who protected her and made her beautiful and who um, defeated the enemies and whose love and righteousness and judgments we're all focused there. Uh, the focus is on the God. But how does this psalm impact us, this side of the cross? We have to read this psalm with New Testament glasses on. And one very helpful passage to go to, um, to help us here, is Hebrews 12. Specifically verse uh, 22 to 24, where... We see the, the writer to the Hebrew says, we, You have come, we have come to Mount Zion. So he starts speaking about Zion, but then he speaks of it as a heavenly Jerusalem. Then he says, You have come to God, and you have come to Jesus, whose blood speaks a better word than the word of Abel. What Hebrews 12 is helping us to see is that all the promises that were true in Psalm 48, that were true of God and of the city of God, all of those things become true of us through Jesus. Um, we, he is our defense. He's our deliverer. He's committed to us as his people. And as his people, we can rest secure knowing that he, as his church, as his people, we will not be destroyed. Verse 14 is such a great comfort. For this God is our God. Forever and ever he will be our guide, even to the end. That can also be translated as he will lead us. Even to the end. And even, even here where it says this God is our God forever and ever. It doesn't say this city is our city forever and ever. God is the focus here. And so for us, reading this psalm, particularly in these COVID-19 days, in this world of insecurity and uncertainty, we can read this knowing that there is a place where security can be found. And that place is not the physical city of Jerusalem, but rather it is found in being a part of God's people through Jesus. Jesus is our God forever and ever. By His Spirit, He is in us, leading us. And um, this is a gospel truth that should be a great comfort to us. For our God is our God. This God is our God forever and ever. He will lead us even to the end. He will lead us through these COVID-19 days. And God is doing something in this pandemic. Let's not waste the pandemic. Let's trust that 
God is using this to help us see that he himself is our fortress. Um, we, we shouldn't be trying to rely on models or um, projections or human leaders, but actually finding our security in our Lord Jesus as our fortress. And so as you teach this to others, I hope that for you yourself, it would be a great joy to be reminded that God is your fortress and then to remind others that he is the one who we can and should and must depend on in these days. Well, God blesses you. Dig in further.